we I wish we can summarize some of the things we've done especially for some of us that are just coming for the first time it's been awesome God has been opening our eyes to the depth the revelation of how the importance of Jesus death his resurrection and his uh, sorry his barrier and his resurrection you see Christianity is built on the foundation of the fact that Jesus died he was buried and he resurrected the third day and that is what we've been looking at since Friday my prayer for you is that the Lord will open your eyes to the revelation of his death his barrier and his resurrection I thought you would say amen. amen one of the things we have said is that Jesus came in John chapter 12 verse 23 to 24 and he was talking about his death he said the hour has come that the son of man will be glorified that is this is the time for what the purpose wherein I am born you see every one of us need to understand Jesus came to the world to die you know it's strange but that is his purpose he said for this purpose was the son of God manifested that he might uh, uh, destroy the works of the devil he came to die for the sin of mankind and redeem us now what brought about the word redeem redeem means to repurchase you know to claim back what is yours you you're claiming it back to yourself in the book of genesis chapter one god created adam and Eve. he created man for himself we all know the story how the devil came and tricked adam and Eve. you know trick eve and eve tricked adam until they did what god asked them not to do and man became separated from god at that point man god began to look for man he said adam where are thou man began to hide from god man began to you know when you, if you have when your children do anything wrong that you ask them not to do one of the first thing they want to do is to avoid you the moment you walk into the house even from their body language you will know that they have done something wrong that you ask them not to do from their body language so when god was coming down to the garden of eden to have fellowship with man like he has always done adam was busy hiding for him he could not confront him the bible still says the sinner I mean, uh, 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 the wicked run when no man pursue him that's one of the things sin does sin brings separation to man you see the word death adam did not physically die in the garden of eden but it was a spiritual death because he could not relate with god anymore he lost the connection that he has with god so ever since then god has been looking for the best way to redeem mankind to himself he sent prophets he sent he did all, all so much but until he sent his only begotten son and that's what we are celebrating since friday till now the whole world is celebrating this that jesus came to die for the sin of mankind to redeem us from the from the from the shackles of the enemy and if you have received jesus as your lord and savior you know now no matter even if you're born into a christian family you have to come to a point in your life that you accept jesus into your life as your lord and as your savior hallelujah you have to acknowledge the fact that he died for you now the death of jesus was the death that you and i are supposed to die the wages of sin is what is death now man's sin man is supposed to die so jesus came and stood in the place of man and died on our behalf he knew no sin he was an innocent person but he died in, in between two thieves he was killed like a criminal because you see he was replacing you and i on that cross and after his death he shed his after his death he was buried after he was buried on the third day he told them that he was going to he was going to come back now some people said it is not true that jesus did not resurrect I don't want us to go into that argument this morning because it will take a lot of time. But, but you see, if only one person saw him after his resurrection, it might mean that maybe that person has a problem. He did not just show himself to his disciples alone. He showed himself to a lot of people. He was seen. He was seen in the public. He had a public life after his resurrection. Although it was brief, but he had a public life. Hallelujah. And if you are, and, and if anybody is watching online because you know we we stream our service online and i know there are different people who are not even christians who probably are watching this and they may feel oh uh, uh, that's what pastors have been saying that's what they say in sunday school jesus died he was buried he resurrected now if it is true if it is a lie how come 
that his name works the wonder that his name still works today. I gave us a statistics on Friday. 34.1% of the world population are Christians. That is over 2.3 billion people are Christians. Out of about 7 billion people. 34.1% are Christians. 24, a little bit above 24% are Muslims. A little bit above 15% are Hinduists. You know, the, most of the Indians, those from the Asian country. And the remaining 15% are the atheists, those who don't believe there is God. Now, if it is true that Jesus did not die, if he was not the son of God, if everything the Bible said about him is not correct, how come till now, after more than 2,000 years, he's still so relevant? He's even more popular than he was before when he, when, when he was killed. Hallelujah. At the mention of the name of Jesus, the Bible says every name will what? Bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, things underneath the heart. And will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. You see, and it's not just that Jesus died and resurrected. He, he manifested himself. He said, go in my name. In my name, you cast out devils. You lay us on the sick and the sick will recover. Even when you bring deadly things, it will not hurt you. Hallelujah. So, he, he died and gave us his name. That's why no matter who you are, if you at the mention of the name of Jesus, the Bible says you'll be saved. All you need to do is to believe. They've made Christianity very complex and difficult. But the only thing you require from you and I is to believe in his death. And believe in his resurrection. Once you believe, you encounter the power in his resurrection. Amen. The, the, the only thing God wants from you and I is to believe. Once you have believed, you'll be saved. Once you, have, once you believe, you have encounter with him. I remember there is a testimony we had when we were in Omotoi. I, I can't, I just remember now. When your former, uh, uh, your booze, they used to have a landlord. This landlord, in fact, maybe, can you still remember the story very well? Please, you, let's have a mic, a second mic. Okay, this is it. Now, Dickness Ubu and her husband, they used to have a landlord. I didn't plan to do this. I just, they used to have a landlord who was very fetish. He has a whole room. Abby, is he the one? Or can you remember me? Um, Okay. Okay. Every morning. And so sometimes even to the entrance of our corridor, we saw some this ado, you know, this type. So we removed that one, we threw it away. So one day he discovered that that thing was removed. And then he asked. But prior to that, every morning he has an office in the house. After waking up, he would bathe, he would dress up and sit in his office. So I always share the scripture. He calls me Bola, we share the Bible. We started sharing the Bible. And he now said, I'm not a cultist. I'm doing this for protection. So along the line, he decided to follow us to church. And everybody was like, Baba, I follow you to church. And we came. I remember in his office that day, he knelt down, gave his life to Christ. And on one of days, Baba, his wife, we carry me a man of God to church. And he stopped all those stuff. And he told us that he actually saw a revelation of Jesus. That's what I want to hear. In his room. In his room, yeah. Yes, that he had seen Jesus before. I said, then why are you doing this? He said, I'm not a member of anything. I'm just doing it for protection. But after he gave his life to Christ, he stopped all those nonsense. Now, you see, thank you so much, man. What is interesting part of the story is that the man had a revelation of Jesus. He said it with his mouth. Even though he was fetish, he had all kinds of things hung everywhere. He said there was a day Jesus appeared to him. If Jesus was just an ordinary man, like you and I, how many times has your great-grandpa appeared to you and caused a miracle to happen in your life by his appearance? I don't know why I'm preaching this this morning, but you see, the truth is this. Jesus is real. It takes a personal revelation of him. You need to, have, if you have a personal revelation of, you see, John the, the, John the beloved said in 1 John chapter 1 verse 1, he said we had him. 
He said we saw him. He said we touched him. When you have a eyewitness encounter, a tangible encounter of Jesus, you know Jesus, that Jesus is real. Very real. The head of Abalist in Lagos State, Olori Babalao in Lagos State. His son, in about 20 years ago, walked into a service in our church. His last born, 17th child. This boy said he has never stepped into any church in his life because they don't go to church. They don't go to mosque. They don't go to church. Although they bear Muslim name, they are forced, they, they, are, they face their... Uh, uh, is it about Allah or if I, yeah, if I, that's what they were doing. And the 17th child walked into a church mistakenly. He thought he saw an advert of a drama. So he came thinking that he was, and you see, that's why sometimes putting, sometimes you scare people away from God. He saw the card and he felt. It's like they want to do drama. Let me go and watch drama. As a teenager, I walked into the church. In the middle of the drama, I preached. After preaching, I made an altar call. He said, something told him to come outside. But he said, no, it's not possible. Because he said, he said in their, on their streets, up till today, their house is in Papa. Up till today, they don't lock their house. And thief has never robbed them. People fear Satan more than they fear God. Though. People came to this church and pack our equipment, but they cannot enter that house. Up to now, he told me that up till now, they don't lock the house. He doesn't live there again. Baba was the head of all Abadists. But let me tell you one of the things, one of, these are things that prove the tangibility of Jesus. His last born, 17th child, walked into a church service and had a voice that told him, respond to the altar call. He said, come and be born again, you to come out. And he refused. But to cut the long story short, I've shared this story several times with you. I don't want to bug you. He, he even left, he came back again, and he gave his life to Christ. Before he gave his life to Christ, he said he cannot even spell his name correctly. That's how bad he was in school. He said, if he's going for exam, he will write his full name on his palm so that at least he can get the spelling correctly. And this boy came to church, got born again, started receiving the word of God. The transformation began gradually and he began to grow in faith. And one thing about him that I've noticed from the very beginning, I know him. He loves God. If, I, I don't, you see, some of times, some of us that are born into Christian, the things we play with, some of them don't play with it. One day I asked him, because the person I'm talking about today is now a pastor in this church, after 20 something years. When I asked him one day, I said, Come, you and with me, I noticed that when we give instruction in church, you do it. I don't know whether it's him or with me. He said, ah, Where we are coming from, if they give you instruction and you don't do it, you can run mad. He had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus changed his life. He passed Waek. He, got, he was the first in the whole family to pass Waek. He was the first in the whole family to, pass, uh, to go to university. Came out with the 2-1, Unilag. He was the first that didn't impregnate a girl while in school. And got the church wedding here. Yeah. And he said, Jesus is not real. Before Baba died, Baba was sick. Baba was sick a few years ago. A day before, Baba said they should that Elova make a pastor because they now call him pastor at home. Now, I didn't tell you this. When Baba saw the transformation in his life, one day Baba called one of our ministers and said, I don't know what you are giving my son, but whatever you people are giving him, please keep giving him. Because 
the other 16, we told you go saw you, they didn't pass GC. The 17th child, the last born, received Jesus and his life was different from the remaining 16. Although later, because of his salvation, some of them started giving their life to Christ. So many of them are some of them have given their life to Christ now. And, and each one who gave their life to Christ are totally different. Baba said, tell him when he's coming to visit me in the hospital, tell him to bring the anointing oil. What could make the head of Habalis in Lagos to demand for anointing oil? You think he has not tried every other thing he knows. He must have tried everything he knows and he saw that this thing is failing me and he's getting close to death then the young man said he went to visit him carry an oil he said baba you say i should bring an oil i'm here he said i've seen you use this thing can you anoint can you use it for me to pray for me somebody who has served he found all his life make a demand for Jesus. And no, let's think about it. He made, he, he made a demand for Jesus. And uh, the young man, today, his son told him, that it will not work unless you give your life to Christ. He said, how do I do it? Then he led him to pray the prayer of forgiveness. He led him to, pray, to make a confession of faith. And Baba became born again. And Baba died the next day. Some people will say, is Baba going to heaven? Baba is in heaven. It's not a question. He's in heaven. Because the ticket, the password to enter, he got it. When you buy a ticket, doesn't matter. When you get your ticket, does not matter. Once you have ticket, if there is a show in a museum center, will they say, hey, you got your ticket, Three hours ago, you cannot enter. No. Once you have the ticket, even if it's one minute to the event, it is a ticket everybody needs. But why I share this story is because I feel there's a lot of controversy in the world today trying to minimize Jesus. They killed him because he was, the he was becoming popular. That's why they killed him. After his resurrection, his death and resurrection, he became more popular. 2.3, over 2.3 billion people. 34.1% of world population are Christians.